So before we get into this video, yeah, Huey wants to say hello. This video is a bit disorganised because of the first half of my week. Um, being a bit muddled up and having to scrap a whole vlog from the start of my week. Mate, stop, stop, stop. Having to scrap a whole vlog from the start of my week um, threw me right off. So I was real disorganised. And to top it off, when I got back to Brisbane, I actually lost an SD card with... Um, with a lot of the B-reels and things like that on it. So I thought I'd give a bit of context to why this video isn't what I feel, to why this video isn't really up to my standards anyway. But like always, I want to thank you guys for all your support. Um, the channel's doing really well. Thank you guys for understanding um, why Vlog 7, uh, why Vlog 7 wasn't up on Wednesday. Being on board with the change with the channel. Um, I'm looking forward to the near future and we'll see what it holds. All right, let's get into it. Welcome back to another video. So I got down to Melbourne Monday night and if you guys watched the last video, um, and if you guys watched the video that I released on Wednesday, you'll, you'll know why there wasn't a vlog put out on Wednesday and why this is vlog seven coming out Friday and why you guys haven't seen the first half of my week. If you haven't seen that video, go and watch it. Just saves me explaining it a million times to everybody. So I got down to Melbourne Monday night. I went down there, basically my truck, my truck wasn't too happy, so I, I left it down there. Apparently they're gonna pull the gearbox out of it and everything, but that's, you know, I'll let them figure it, I'll let them figure that out. Um, so I'm in another truck and I'm halfway and I'm halfway back home to Brisbane. I'm now um, doing my pre-trips. But I, um, I found this... Found that puddle of oil on my walk around. Uh, I got up underneath the trailers and there's nothing... There's nowhere underneath the trailer that that could be dripping out of... Um, out from underneath me, so I'm pretty sure that's from another vehicle. I hope it's from another vehicle, I'm pretty certain it is. But um, I'll show you guys the truck that I'm driving for the meantime. So the truck is out there, you'll know that I usually drive a big cab K200, um, X15, auto gearbox. It's a nice truck, goes all right. But now... Now I'm back in a standard cab um, K200. I'm pretty sure this one's got an X15 in it. Um, for anyone, for the Americans and British out there and Canadians, people who don't have these K200s, they all look the same on the inside unless they've had work done to them. It's exactly the same apart from the fact that, now I don't know how well you guys can tell, but it's only a single bed, mine the mess, I've got nowhere to put my clothes because I haven't got drawers in this truck. But um, so my big cab, uh, if you go back through the footage, you'll know that basically there's another uh, there's probably another meter back on this on the back wall there, but this is only a single bed. There's plenty of space on this for me. It's not a small bed. It's just a single bed. Uh, for me, because I carry a lot more gear than than other people do, small cabs or standard cabs. Sorry, uh, I call them small cabs. But small cabs are less practical for me because I carry more gear than a lot of people do. But like, I'm not complaining. I'm, I'm having fun in it. Uh, the biggest difference between this truck and my big cab that I usually drive is this. There's a third pedal there, and there's an 18 speed, there's an 18 speed shifter there. So this has got a road ranger in it, manual. For those of you watching who aren't truck drivers and you don't know the difference between a car manual and a truck manual, in a manual car you've got either five or six gears, that's usually the norm, but in trucks we've got 18 gears. So that's the start of this week's vlog. I'm going to start this one with a food review because you guys have been pounding me for them. Let's eat some food. So at these big truck stops in Australia, you've either got like takeaway food, we've got anything from McDonald's, um, obviously the gas station food, uh, some servos have KFC, FAs, things like that. But this particular servo that I'm at, I'm at the Ampole and Wyal. They've got this green building here. This green building here is called Oliver's and that over there is McDonald's. So I've eaten McDonald's in a few different countries in my life and it, it's it's the same no matter where you go. So the only way that I would 
record myself eating McDonald's as if if I was doing like a mukbang or a truck bang. That's what I that's what I reckon I'll call it, which I might do in the future. But anyway, so Oliver's, I went here and I got what do I got in front of me? And I got a beef burger. It um yeah. The thing the thing about Oliver's, I've never been in there for three reasons, right? Here, there's three reasons why I haven't been into Oliver's. One is it's a healthy food restaurant. If food looks like this and doesn't look like and doesn't look like it's gonna give me heart disease, I'd rather go to McDonald's and get heart disease. Two is I don't I don't really fit in, in there. Obviously they know that there's a market for healthy eaters and healthy eaters aren't usually truck drivers. So I went in there and it was Spanish and it was Spanish backpackers and and people on laptops with coffees next to them. So not really my scene. Maccas is more my scene where all the plebs are. Three is the price. Every time I've gone in there to kind of have a look to see if I want anything, it's the pricing that Oliver's has is ridiculous. They they clearly they're clearly not trying to market towards me, a truck driver. Clearly not trying to get me in the door, a truck driver who doesn't want to spend 21 bucks, 22 bucks, sorry, on like dry chips and healthy burger. But I'm going to review it anyway because you never know, the patty might be awesome, things like that. So straight off the bat, it was 22 bucks. Honestly, I'm kind of regretting buying it, but I'm doing it for the video. I should have just went and got like six cheeseburgers and I would have been way happier. So the price is horrible. The way it looks, like I said, uh, it's got some kind of hot sauce on there, so that might be exciting. But like I said, it doesn't look like it's going to give me heart disease, so I'm not all that excited about the way it looks. And like these chips, McDonald's chips shine, like they literally glow because because they're cooked in diabetes. Um, so I'm not excited about the chips. The drink is somewhere back here, whatever that is. I, I like all kinds of drinks, so I don't think I'm going to dislike that. The packaging, again, it doesn't tell me that I'm going to get diabetes, so I'm not all that excited about the packaging. I reckon I'll just rip into it, eh? Find the phone holder. Uh, first bite. I literally haven't taken a bite out of this. First bite. <laughs> it's not actually that bad. The patty is awesome. That patty, even though like it looks dry, but that's way better than a McDonald's patty, I'll tell you that much. I might have dogged this bloody burger out. It's kind of, I, I shouldn't have knocked it before I tried it, to be honest with you, because it's, <laughs> it's a really good burger. Although, price, right, one of the most important things, I would never buy this burger again because I'd rather get six cheeseburgers. Alright, so, this, this is like just a really expensive, good tasting homemade burger. That's what this tastes like. This tastes like the burgers that me, my wife and my kid have at home. I don't know what the sauce is, like, the sauce is like a, oh, it's like a relish, um, I like to think that I've had pretty good relishes in my life, I used to have a lady, one of our family friends, our whole relationship, when I was around four or five, was built on the fact that she used to make the best tomato relish I've ever had in my life. And I've never had relish like that, ever. Unfortunately, she passed away when I was young. I remember the day, and I asked for the last jar of relish, and I got it. And I ate that jar, and I didn't even save the jar of relish. I ate it in like a day, I think, when I was four. I can remember opening that jar, so that's, that's my relish career. If my two-year-old was to chew a sweet potato up, and then spit it out into a deep fryer. That's what this would. That's what these chips taste like. But I get it. I get that there's a market for healthy eating and healthy eaters. I'm just not one of them. I can make this burger, right? This exact burger from the supermarket for like five bucks. Because the salads aren't crazy. Like it's just lettuce, tomato, onion. But that patty. That patty is next level. Like it, it really is next level. I was, I'm having trouble getting it to focus. But 
that paddy the paddy has um, I think it's got high fat content but it's got a high fat to beef ratio next level so Oliver's you're doing well with this beef burger next time I review an Oliver's burger it'll be um, one of the peri peri chicken burgers I think even though I'm not really a fan of chicken burgers unless it's a McChicken chips you guys need to throw these bloody things in the bin and go across to McDonald's and ask them for advice these are horrible so I know when I said food review um, that most of you were probably thinking I was going to go into the restaurant and be, an, and be a YouTuber and film in a restaurant but like the we're a trucking channel so I'm going to do my food reviews in a Kenworth yeah see I like anything I like any drink that drink's really good so it's a it's an orange um, they call it a so sodaly uh, it's by Remedy no I'm pretty sure I used to pick pack these at one point or I'll probably crack one open on the floor one day so because of that burger and I will go back and get that burger one day because that was awesome I'll, I'll give that place bloody I don't know I gave the burger a 7 or an 8 I'll give that place a 4 I reckon they're lucky it's not a 0 Oliver's good job on the beef burger I'll be back in one day I'll be back in one day to try the peri peri chicken. All right, let's get on the road. in the four mile I think it's four mile or twelve mile rest area just above Taree here just south of Taree uh, my, my B trailer lights are flickering on and off um, usually when this happens I just grab a fat zip tie and then go and zip tie the lead so it stays tight into the connection so let's go do that now I grabbed two zip ties and zip tied the connection in they'll just keep the two connections together as tight as they can so from where I am in Taree here I'm roughly uh, 600 k's from Brisbane I think just under six hours um, I'll have to stop for another 15 minutes because I've been here 15 minutes I'll have to stop for another 15 or another half an hour up the road somewhere to make sure I meet my logbook requirements and then I'll be in Brisbane probably one o'clock in the morning with it being six o'clock now yeah one o'clock in the morning sounds about right hopefully it's not too hot in Brisbane I have looked at the temperature it's not too bad So I'm down here at Ballina. Um, I, left, I left that rest area that you guys last saw me at around four and a half hours ago. And I've got another hour, 45, two hours to get up to Brisbane yet. But um, I pulled in here. Plenty of trucks here. 
I pulled in here, I'm gonna grab a couple of my microwave meals because I've got a microwave in the driver's lounge here. Go heat those up and at the same time I'm gonna check my fuel levels for my trailers, my truck's good. I've got plenty of fuel in them. Um, I'll just do a quick walk around of the truck. Yeah, looks pretty good. My wife, because she was sick last week, um, along with our kids, she wasn't doing much cooking, so she got me these. I was going to throw these in the bin, but when you're hungry, you're hungry. So <coughs> I'm about to leave Ballina. So I've got, uh, if I take my time, it's it'll be two hours up to Brisbane, somewhere up the road. I'll pull over and change the camera angle as well. But, um, all right, let's go, I think. Oh, actually the trailer lights just went out again. They're probably gonna go out again, but um, they just don't seem to like they, they're all right when I'm moving, but whenever I slow down, and like I stopped in a parking bay earlier, I slow down, it's like they, it's like they just don't want to work anymore. gap between this clip and the last one um, I didn't I forgot to take my GoPro charger home so that was awesome uh, but I'm back in the yard I'm hooked up to a double set and I'm going to and I'm on my way out to Inverell so I'm going out there empty um, and then I'll come back loaded full of beef for anybody that doesn't know New South Wales all that well Inverell is uh, five hours southwest of Brisbane on the New England Highway so you go from Brisbane out to Warwick and out to Glen Innes on the New England Highway, then across the Inverell. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty big place actually for being basically in the middle of nowhere.
pull over at the Ar Arachula BP. Uh, it's taken me a while to get here. It took me just under two hours to get out here because there was, uh, I don't know what it was, but the, the ramp net onto the motorway from our depot, um, I don't know, I think a truck crashed there or something and they closed the lane. So I'm gonna have a 15 minute here and then I'm gonna shoot straight out to Inverell. I should be there, uh, usually it takes me, I should be there in about four hours, I think. But I'm just gonna go back here and fix this trailer handle. So this is the same double set that I brought from Melbourne. Uh, yesterday, I'm still having problems with the trailer lights. It must be just a bad connection because I change because I changed the lead, but um, it must be the female side of this. I might put the I might go old school and put the camera on the outside of the window. Um, oh, that was me. While I'm going up the range, I think it's a pretty good view. Roll that clip.
finished loading out here at Inverell. Apologise again that I can't show you guys that kind of stuff anymore, but that's alright. What I'm doing now is um, doing my paperwork. So I'll do my con note first. Uh, so I've, right now I've got seven chips there, 29 loskins there. Seven chips and 29 loskins. And then I've got another A trailers full of empty ship pallets. And then I've got a couple stacks on the B trailer as well. So I've got 210 all up. Plus, plus seven on here. So that's 217 uh, ship pallets all up and 29 Loskin pallets all up. Over 34 spaces. But the, the ship pallets weigh absolutely nothing, so I'll be flying home tonight. I do have, still have beef in the B trailer though. Uh, so the date is the 23rd, or the 3rd, 23rd, Inverell. All right, time to get the sandwich. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I might have just got put off coming here though. This lady, before she put it in the toaster, she put it in the microwave while it was still wrapped in glad wrap. So, I don't know how I'm gonna go with that. But anyway, from here I'm gonna send it to Brisbane and then I'll jump in the car and go home for the weekend. Um, I'll talk to you guys then because I'm going to round up my Ks and because a lot of people have been asking me about how many Ks I do a week. So I'll get there and I'll look at my logbook and then we'll see how many Ks I've done. Beautiful morning in Brisbane. Um, time to go home and see the family, I guess. I've got to strip, I'm going to strip all my gear out of this truck because I, because I swapped into this truck like in the middle of a run and I haven't really had the time to organize the truck I'm gonna strip everything right out of it and come Sunday I'm gonna re I'm gonna re reorganize all my gear for Sunday and then organize it into the truck when I get here <laughs> 